If you're new here, hi, I'm Jake Bartlett and I've been teaching motion designers how to use After Effects for over a decade. I want you to benefit from my years of experience, develop good workflow habits and become an After Effects genius. These aren't your average tutorials. They're a series of lessons specifically designed to teach you valuable knowledge that most people don't learn on their own and take your motion design projects to the next level. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of the lessons and get ready to take some notes. One of the most misunderstood features of After Effects for motion designers is the text animator. It just works differently than basically anything else in After Effects, but it's also one of the most powerful features if you truly understand how to use them. And that's why I'm gonna teach you the basics of how they work, walk you through building a base animator that can easily be updated to create all kinds of animations, and how to save it as a preset so you can start working like an After Effects genius. You can download all of the presets I make in this video and use them in your own projects, including this one that I built specifically for this series. Just follow the link down in the description. Now I built this artwork in another AE Genius video. I just pushed it a little bit further. It now has some squash and stretch, radio waves in the background, and this text at the top that says pixel power. Now this text is getting cut off because I'm using the CC bend it effect to bend it, but I don't need to worry about that because it's going to be animating on and we're really not gonna see it cut off at the top there. Now to build this text animator and to make it a little easier to focus, I'm just gonna duplicate this text and move it forward. We'll get the CC bend it hidden so we're not seeing any distortion, and let's just turn off some of these other layers so we can focus on just that text right there. I'll zoom in a little bit and let's just reposition this text down and even make it a little bit smaller. Now to add text animators, we need to go into the layer itself and there's this little animate drop down. This is going to have each and every single property that you're able to add to a text animator. And there's lots more than just the standard transform properties. There's things like fill color, stroke color, stroke width, tracking, all kinds of things. The majority of my text animators are just with these basic transformations like position, scale, rotation, opacity. But the beauty of text animators is that you can add or remove at any time and it's totally non-destructive. Everything that we're going to be setting up is in a different part of the system. So I'm just gonna choose scale as my text animator. I want this text to scale from zero to 100% in kind of a cascading way, just flowing through the text layer and make it nice and eased so it's really nice and smooth as well as animate back off. So as soon as I added that scale property, it built a text animator, animator one. It's kind of like a shape group on a shape layer. And then we have a range selector and then the scale that I chose in that list. It's set to 100% by default. So we're really not seeing any change in our text. It's still 100% scale. But this is the property that's going to allow the text animator to actually affect the text. I'm gonna leave that at its default just for now and point out that we have these overlays on top of our text. So there's some X's down at the base of every character. That's indicating that this animator is being applied per character. And these are the anchor points for each character of my text layer. I'll show you how to change that in a minute. But then we have these graphics at the start and the end of the text. And those are related to the range selectors start and end values. If I click and drag on either of these, you can see that it moves that start value around or the end value around. This is the range of the text that's being affected by the animator and it's measured in percentage. It's the percentage of the entire text layer. So if I set the start to zero and the end to 50, then the first half of the text layer is within range of the text animator. Oh, I get it. Now if I affect that scale by changing this value down to zero, that first half, which is within range, is now set to 0%. And if I offset this using the offset value, it's going to shift the start and end values around that range of text, and whatever's within that 50% range is what will be affected by that 0% scale. So this is in essence how a text animator works. You apply a certain value, in this case 0%, and you choose how much of the text layer is going to be affected by that value. And the offset can actually go all the way to negative 100%, all the way up to 100%. So that range can actually exist before and after the text layer. That's important because of the next thing we're going to change. Obviously, this isn't really animating the text in the way that I want it to. Everything within that range is just 0% scale. I wanna see it cascading upwards from 0% to 100%. And to do that, I need to dig into the advanced controls. And this is probably where a lot of users get very confused because there's a lot of terminology in here that isn't just immediately apparent 
as what it actually means. Fortunately, there are only two properties that I need to change to make this kind of my base text animator that I can use over and over again. The first thing I wanna change is the shape. This is basically how the text animator is affecting the text layer. And currently, square is just whatever's between the start and end gets whatever value we've set up in our properties, in this case, 0%. I wanna change this from square to ramp up. Don't worry about the other ones, ramp up is what you want, so I'm gonna choose that. And now that text is going to scale up from 0% on the end up to 100% at the start. So if I shift that range around, it's going to kind of stair step that text up from 0% to 100%, which is what I'm after. Let's change the range to be 100% and our offset to zero, just so we can see that we've got 0% scale on the far end and 100% at the start of the text layer. Next, I wanna come down to this ease low value. This is basically like easing in on a keyframe, except it's being applied for each individual character. So if I increase this value really high, you're gonna see that the text grows more quickly. We're essentially easing into its resting state, the unaffected state of the text animator. I'm just gonna crank that all the way up to 100%, and that's all I need to do in the advanced section. So I'm gonna collapse that up, and now I can actually animate this. So I'm gonna back my offset all the way up to negative 100%, and I'll go to the start of that layer, make sure I'm on the first frame, and press the stopwatch to add a keyframe. And then I'll go forward, let's say, 30 30 frames and increase that value up to 100%. And now if I play this back, I've got this nice smooth text animator that's scaling the text up from start to end exactly how I want it. And like I said, you can build on this. I'm using the scale property, but what if I wanted to add in some rotation? Then I just need to go to this add menu, property, rotation, and then I can increase this to maybe something random and just play this back. And now we've got rotation and scale. I could even add in some position. Let's add in the position property and lower the text a little bit. Now it's going to rise up while rotating and scaling. And it's all being applied based on what we set up in that range selector. And this is just one of the many features of After Effects that I teach in my course, Launch Into After Effects, the most comprehensive intro to After Effects ever. You get to make 10 unique projects that each teach you a different aspect of After Effects. I built this course because it's what I wish I had when I was learning After Effects. So if you truly wanna become an After Effects genius, head to jakeinmotion.com and enroll in the Launch Into After Effects today. Now what's so great about these range selectors is that I can have more than one on a single text animator. So this range selector one, I'm just going to select it and rename it by pressing enter and say range selector in, this will be our in animation, and then duplicate it with controller command D and call this range selector out. And I can very easily modify this to affect the text in an equal and opposite way. So let's go into that range selector out group and down into the advanced section. I just need to change the shape from ramp up to ramp down. My text is going to disappear because the offset keyframes are timed exactly the same as the range selector in. So I'm just gonna shift these forward in time and increase my range on my work area and play this back. Now we'll animate on and then animate back off. And just like that, I've built a reusable text animator. Now, I don't wanna have that rotation and position, so I'm just gonna delete those out of my animator and I've got my basic scale up from the baseline. But let's say instead of scaling from the base of the text, I wanted it to scale from the center of the text. To do that, I just need to go into the more options of my text layer and find the grouping alignment. This is what's going to offset that anchor point. You can see those little X's moving around as I do this. So I'm just gonna shift that up until it's about halfway up my text and now that scale is going to happen from the center. So think of grouping alignment like the anchor point per character on your text layer, or whatever you've set your anchor point grouping to. I could change this to word, and then there's only going to be one anchor point per word, and all of the characters are going to scale from that. Now, if you wanted to scale up each word individually as a whole and not by characters, then you would need to go into your range selector, down into the advanced, and change the based on property from characters to words. And I'll do that for both of my animators so that it happens both in and out of this animation. Now it's going to scale up one word at a time based on the center point of each one of those words. So you can easily customize how the text animator is being applied with that based on property and the anchor point grouping.
I'm gonna undo back to where we were with just the per character scaling. I think that looks good. And I wanna show you one more thing before we save this as a text animator, which is the size of the range. It's currently set to 100%, so it's ramping up at a value that's equal to the width of the text layer. But if I change this down to 50% on the end property, then my range is going to be smaller and the text is going to be animated on more quickly. You can see the difference between the in and the out because I haven't changed the end value on that out. It's much quicker on the in animation than it is on the out animation. So you could do this as tight as you want. Maybe I want 25% on both the incoming and outgoing animations. Now it's gonna happen a lot more tightly on that text layer. So just be aware of that. You can play around with the start and end values to increase or decrease the range of effectiveness and then shift that range around using the offset property. I'm gonna leave it back down to its default and I'm gonna give this text animator a name. So let's grab animator one. I'll rename it with the enter key and I'll just call this smooth text scale up. And here's the really important thing. When we go to save a text animator, if there's anything that you changed in the more options section, you need to make sure that that's selected when you save the animation preset. I don't wanna select all of the text because that's gonna include the source text, which carries over all of the styling, the font choice, anything else within the layer. I just wanna select what I want to be saved in the preset so I can apply it to any text layer without changing the way that it looks. Since I changed the grouping alignment, I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to control click on the smooth text scale up animator, and then come up to the animation menu and say save animation preset. I like to save my animation presets under the user presets folder, which is under documents, Adobe, the version of After Effects you're using, and then user presets on a PC. On a Mac, it's a very similar location. But let's just call this the same thing, smooth text scale up. And as soon as I hit save, it's going to show up in my effects and presets. I just go into the animation presets and then user presets, and there it is, smooth text scale up. So now I can go back to my first text layer. I can turn this one off, find the one that was bent already and part of my composition, go to the first frame and apply that text animator. And if I press U, it'll show those two range selector offset keyframes and it will animate the text on and eventually animate it back off. I just need to retime these offset keyframes and maybe have both of these animations happen a little bit faster. So I'm gonna grab the second keyframe of both offset properties and drag them back. And now that's timed with my animation a little bit more nicely. So if I move my work area back here, we can see the animation as a whole, pixel power, that looks really great. I've got my animator that I can reuse any way that I want and very easily manipulate to create any kind of animation. Again, if I wanted to, I could just add another property like rotation and then change that value. And both of those range selectors are going to take that value into account. So now my text is going to rotate and scale in instead of just scaling in. You could save that as its own preset or just build off of your base animator every time that you go to create a text animation. There's a lot more to learn about text animators, but this is really the foundation of it all. And it gives you a great place to start building your own animation preset library, which can save you massive amounts of time when animating in After Effects. And that's exactly what I teach you how to do in this video. So don't miss out on that. Jeez.